tell us a little bit about this uh company it is um no evil foods what can you tell us about no evil foods well uh some twitter followers have said that they were just missing a comma it was just no comma evil foods um but uh no evil foods is a vegan meat company like a plant-based meat company uh and at this time it was based in weaverville north carolina which is near Asheville. It had a production facility of roughly 55 to 60 employees that were making these things. Uh, it's a startup. It's been around for five years or so. Uh, it, it really broke through in 2019 when it, it, it increased its, uh, the number of stores that you could buy it in to about 5,000 stores. And it really has this kind of progressive message like that it's branding and it's sort of cultural imprimatur is very very progressive they they have a, a one brand of fake chicken called comrade cluck they have another one uh, a chorizo a fake chorizo product called uh, el zapatista actually it was called that until the, the zapatistas actually found out about it and had to change the name but uh, so they brand themselves as very committed to kind of social justice and, uh, and uh, you know, that kind of thing. So obviously it was interesting when the workers decided, okay, well, then we want a union. And, you know, we've seen, um, we've seen this, this type of situation um, in other uh, venues. In fact, this, um, uh, this very program runs on the, uh, the choice from MSNBC. Uh, MSNBC, uh, of course, uh, is branded as a um, a left leaning liberal um, uh, network, and they have been um, uh, they have been. Uh, there's a union drive at the um, at MSNBC as well as on the choice. Um, and uh, I should say, just full disclosure, we are uh, we license our show to them. We don't have any uh, employees here of MSNBC or The Choice, uh, but nevertheless, um, the and the so what can be met? Uh, so in this instance, and and I think this is consistent with MSNBC and The Choice as well as uh, No Evil Foods. Um, the what is the response? The potential responses of management when uh workers come and say you know we have decided that we want a union i think one of the strengths of management's position was they were able to say hey we 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 like unions in theory we uh you know we're all for worker justice and and we try to treat you guys right but then they pivot to say we just don't think it's right for this business at this time. Well, before you get into what their specific response was, I'm asking, what are the options that an employer has oh, oh. if their employees come? I mean, just sort of just so that people understand the different uh, tax that could be taken in that moment. Right. Understood. So uh, last, uh, I believe it was the summer of 2019 when this all started. So when a majority of uh, workers say we are signing cards, we want to, uh, you know, consider to join a union. Uh, the the company can voluntarily say yes, uh, we will allow you to join the union. We will immediately enter into negotiations over collective bargaining. We can voluntarily allow that. The other option is, well, no, you have to have a vote now. You have to have a vote of the workers to decide uh, by majority vote whether or not they want the union uh, to be part of our process. And at that point, only after then will, will we engage in bargaining. And of course, No Evil Foods opted for the latter. They, they, they forced a National Labor Relations Board election. That election didn't take place until February 2020. And in that time between uh, the summer of 2019 and February 2020, they hired a, a law firm that was known for union avoidance campaigns. That's what they call union busting nowadays. And uh, among their many strategies 
was to hold these captive audience meetings where employees, it was mandatory for them to show up on work time. They took, took time off the production line, went to these meetings. There were several meetings a week in the lead up to the election. Wow. Uh, and uh, yeah. Several meetings yeah. a week? And Wow. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Um, there, there were, so we have, we have, we have the tape of about five or six, I believe of these meetings totally. They're usually about an hour in length. Uh, and they were done, you know, they had multiple shifts for, uh, uh, no evil foods. They had a morning shift and a, and a second shift and they did the meeting for each shift, uh, separately. And so this is many, many hours of these uh, these meetings, which were pitched as like informational sessions. We just want us as management to explain to you as workers what it means to have a union at No Evil Foods. And, and that's how they were pitched. And, and they, they, they proceeded from there. And, and, and to put this in context, you know, we saw this with the Amazon Bessemer fight. Um, uh, Amazon could have said, OK, we voluntarily accept that you're you know, you want to unionize this uh, warehouse uh, instead. They buy the time. And, and, and why just from a generic standpoint, why do companies opt when they don't want a union uh, vehemently? Uh, why do they opt for this? I mean, they could. I mean, I guess you you could say to the National Labor Relations Board, you could theoretically say, like, we want to vote just to make sure that everybody, you know, that the, that the that's what they really want. But let's hold the vote next week instead of four months out from now or five months out from now. They could do that. Right. And so why why do they want sure, that time? Sure. Just talk uh, about the general. Uh, I mean. Yeah. I mean, it takes some time to, to set up the, the circumstances of the election, the, 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 you know, how it how it would be carried out and whatnot. But, yes, it could be much quicker process. You're absolutely right. This strategy has really been honed over decades. I mean, uh, there is a playbook for how management, when they don't want a union, deals with a union drive and anti-union meetings are a major part of that. And we don't usually get to hear them all. You know, I mean, uh, union representatives are not allowed in these meetings. It's the workers and management. That's the only people who are allowed in these meetings. Uh, you know, we've heard of, uh, about, you know, the characterization maybe of some of these, but rarely do we get a chance to listen to hours and hours of this, of this campaign, which is very coordinated and very targeted. Uh, these are speeches. They they have they have slide presentations attached to them. Uh, these are very very sophisticated campaigns, and and by by getting to hear them, you kind of get to demystify them, and and future organizers will kind of know what to expect in their workplace. That, that's what I wanted to ask you. Like, I mean, obviously, from a, a standpoint of the press, and we're going to go through, you know, sort of some of the major highlights, if you will, I guess, of of these speeches. But um, and obviously, this is a rare opportunity for the general public. And I would imagine also, you know, people in the media, how much, you know, and I presumably the unions involved in this organizing and just unions in general now have access to these tapes in some form or another, I would imagine mm -hmm. how, how, what's the reaction from union organizers? Are they like, we knew all this or were they like, this is a gold mine for us because now we can arm some of our workers who want to organize with, you know, strategies to at the very least counteract i mean because i mean look let's let's face yeah. it we're we're sitting here in a country where a significant percentage of the of the population are not getting vaccinations when we have a daily example of what happens when you don't get vaccinated in terms of like who's dying and who's not Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. Catch uh, the exclusive version of this show on The Choice from MSNBC on the Peacock app at 4 p.m. daily, at least Monday through Friday. That's Eastern, 4 p.m. Eastern.